Okay, we want to welcome everyone to our first meeting in March. It's 5 o'clock, and we'll go ahead and we'll call this meeting to order. If everyone would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Deb. Here. Here. Rodney. Here. 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 Okay, we do have a quorum. Uh, entertain a motion then to approve today's agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Roll call, Deb. Pardon? Yes. Brad. Yes. Brad. Yes. Brad. Yes. Brad. Yes. Brad. Yes. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, across the mayor's desk, I want to this evening uh, thank Shay Tilgis for being our videographer. And just want to acknowledge all the great things that are happening in Algona with our youth. Uh, we certainly want to congratulate the Bishop Garrigan girls basketball team for becoming state champions. Um, and that was, those of you that watched the game, that was rather a heart-stopping last game. But um, we're happy that they won. But also, just uh, this past weekend, we had state qualifiers in swim meets. Uh, there's been music programs, pop concerts in both schools this past week. So just a lot going on. I just encourage everyone to be watching, uh, watchful of those, and, and uh, congratulate the teachers and the kids and uh, coaches and everybody that's been involved. So it's just an exciting time to be now going right now. So, Council, have anything they would like to share? Okay, hearing none, uh, an update from the city administrator. All right, got a few items um, tonight on the update. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, bring up uh, Laura Walton, our uh, library director, to introduce our new children's librarian. Uh -huh. Hi, everyone. Hi, Laura. Good to see you again. Yep. I'm very happy, as you can tell, to introduce you to Brianna Temple. She started with us last week, last Wednesday, and we are so very pleased to have her with us as the new children's librarian. I'll let her tell you a little bit about herself. <laughs> well, as Laura said, I'm Brianna. Um, I am from Wyoming, Colorado. And um, so I was definitely new to me, but I'm really excited. Uh, I was a middle school art teacher for a while. I also work in a school library as well as a public library. Um, I'm currently on my, um, I'm currently uh, completing my master's of library science at the services concentration, so I'm really excited to um, put my expertise that I learned at school into this um, position. Great. Great. Wow. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. Thank you. <coughs> so it's a great time of the season to, to have a, a new children's librarian with our uh, summer programs coming up, so um, one opportunity to, for people to, to see the new face in town, as I'm sure they'll be seeing a lot of with all the uh, great programs the library offers. Uh, next, Joanne has a few. It's nice just to farm these out. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob enjoys delegating some of these announcements, don't you, Jacob? Well, my first uh, slew of announcements I've got are on behalf of Nick Deers, our Parks and Rec. He has a bunch of fun activities coming up that some of them happen this spring, some of them happen this summer but it's time to sign up for them right now. And so a couple of those are co-ed spring soccer for youth, and um, that's for kids that are third through sixth grade. We have previously had older kids, seventh and eighth grade. That is not the case this year. It's uh, just that third through six. So get signed up by March 11th, it's $20. Bring your own cleats and your own water bottle, and we provide the shin guards. And that's been kind of a fun and growing program. So if you have a child at your house that loves to play soccer, just likes to kick things, Bring them over for that. Um, also the same deadline, March 11th, for summer and baseball and softball. And so sometimes it's a little harder since the program doesn't actually start until the end of April or May to think, why do I have to sign up so early? Well, you just do. Uh, so Friday, and so it's $25 if you sign up by Friday. It's gonna be $5 more if you wait, so you might as well get that done. So that is coming and there's a great baseball softball tradition here so we look forward to that. And that's for kids second through sixth grade. So time to get that signed up. And you can sign up online. We've had a couple people that have trouble with that. We have paper signups as well. We're kind of hoping that all that Bishop Garrigan and, uh, and I'll go to basketball action will lead people to sign up for the alumni basketball tournament. 
And only do it if you're not going to hurt yourself, right, Paul? It's a lot of fun. Dads and grads will be there. <laughs> Dads and grads will be there. It's a lot. It's a great That's tradition. Good. If you're an alumni of one yep. of those schools and you'd like to put together a team, you can sign up online. You can stop by the office. Um, that's just years and years of fun tradition there. I believe this is the 18th year. Can somebody confirm that? Deb's kind of nodding. We're pretty sure that's close, right? 17th or 18th year. Um, Nick is very excited about that. So if you have questions, Nick Beers is your guy. We're trying a new event called Family Dodgeball Night. We're very excited about this. It is a one-nighter. You know, sometimes we all have a lot of things going on. Committing to a six-week program is too much, but committing to one night of fun we can handle that. So March 21st is Family Dodgeball Night. It's for all ages. Um, we don't even know all the fun we're gonna have, but we do know this, you have to wear clean shoes. You, If you're under 12, you have to show up with an adult chaperone. But otherwise, it's just gonna be a free-for-all. Nick's got a lot of plans. He's thinking dads versus moms. He's thinking kids versus parents. He said, maybe it's just everyone against everyone. We think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, come with a high tolerance for chaos is my only recommendation, but it's gonna be really good. So we're looking forward to that. We're also talking with our Aquatic Center staff about it's time to get some summer staff hired for the pool. So we're specifically looking for lifeguards, we're looking for concession stand workers, people to work that front desk. So if you're looking for a fun summer seasonal job where you can be with other people on that team, we're hiring right now and the deadline is April 1st. So that's coming up, that's kind of the parks and rec stuff. And I wanted to touch really quick on community visioning. Um, thanks to everybody who participated in those community focus groups. We talked a lot about getting people there and people came and I just really appreciated that. We had 40 people come and participate that morning and, and great feedback, great ideas. The goal was really to start gathering input on what are some of the barriers for transportation around Algona and what are some of the really good things. And we got a lot of feedback. We kind of targeted older adults over, over age 65. We looked at people who had lower mobility. We talked with parents. We talked with active recreationists. And then we had our local steering committee participate as well. But it was a very productive morning and we got a lot of data. So the next step is we have Iowa State interns who are kind of crunching all that data for us. They will bring us a report to review, looking for trends, looking for information that can help us build some goals and some plans. It is a long process. Um, we anticipate it'll take about six weeks for them to pull that data together. In the meantime, we'll be doing some other meetings and some other planning. So keep staying tuned to that. Um, you can look for updates on that and some of these other updates are in our latest edition of the Neighborhood News, which just went out on the, on the website and Facebook today. So if you'd like to read that, it is out there under community links. It's also pushed out on our social media. So if there's any questions about any of those things, I was just wondering about the location on some Central Park. Is that still where soccer is? Uh, I know some is tore up, so I didn't know if that would affect You know anything. what? That's a great question. Um, and I'll have Nick answer that one for you. I believe it is still there, but okay. you would have to check with Nick Beers on that one as far as location. Then the other There's one, plenty of space there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there, there is. Uh, yeah. So it might still be there. Sure. Um, the dodgeball being new, where is that going to be? That's going to be at Algona High School. Yep, oh, so it'll be okay. at Algona High, and that's why they said, please wear your clean shoes. We want to keep that place. Okay. We don't want to track. It's muddy season as well, as well yeah. as soccer season. So oh. that's where that one will be, Algona High. I think we... Thank you for pointing that out. That one is completely free, and you don't even have to tell us you're coming. It's RSVP, because it's hard. Yeah, no RSVP, because I know sometimes you don't even know what your schedule is going to be until it gets to be that time. So we just really want people to come, have a good night, and if it's a success, we might do a couple of them next year. Okay. Well, it sounds like a good preparation Like for that would be like to watch Dodgeball the movie and get that all sounds like warmed up on it. Or just doing some <laughs> moving around so you're ready. You know, I'd, I'd recommend that. It'd be a great uh, yeah, practice yeah. regimen for you, Harley. Yeah. Any other yeah. questions? And that's at 7 o'clock? That's at 6.30 oh, and we're in about an hour. Okay. Um, you don't want to practice with wrenches. <laughs> <That's not laughs> I was going to practice with Harley or something. <laughs> You don't have to practice to show up, but you know, yeah, just get ready. Get yeah, mentally prepared. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any other questions for me? All right, thanks Good. so much. Thanks. Thank you. Um, as you had mentioned, uh, we are right now advertising and hiring uh, for lifeguards uh, for the upcoming summer. Um, in addition, we are uh, have our jobs posted for the summer public works and parks positions as well that we're accepting applications for those. Uh, 
And then uh, finally, just want to give an update on uh, the progress out at the Peach Park Shelter House. Um, the interior is more or less done. Um, the kind of the, the big item that we're waiting on right now is for temperatures to warm up um, so we can finish the exterior work. Um, last fall, when um, they began uh, finishing the block, um, there were some issues with the uh, stain that went on there. So we've got a new subcontractor lined up. Um, same construction does. Um, so uh, the last big task on that will be cleaning the stain um, off the block that we have right now and then refinishing it. So I uh, just want to let people know if they walk by and see kind of different colors and different sections and um, have concerns that that is going to be addressed. We're just one of those things that we're waiting for uh, the temperatures to warm up um, to, to be able to do that work. Uh, but we're hoping that the uh, shelter house will be all uh, wrapped up here, um, weather depending, um, here in April. So. Very good. Okay. Thank you. We'll move to agenda item number seven. This is the citizen's opportunity to address the council with any item that is not on uh, today's agenda. Is there anyone here in the council chambers that would like to speak? Seeing none, is there anyone on the phone? Okay. Okay, we'll move then to agenda item number eight, which is the consent agenda, and that includes approving the minutes from our last city council meeting on February the 21st approve the bills to be paid this cycle, approve a Class C beer permit for Algona Classic Stop, approve a Class E liquor license to Akron Stop, and approve Jacob's Administrator's Report. Move to approve. I'll second. We have a motion from Harley, a second from Tyler. Uh, any discussion? Hearing on vote, please, Deb. Harley. Yes. 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 Motion carried. Agenda item number nine, then under new business, this is an ordinance, uh, the third reading ordinance amending the zoning map. Um, this uh, ordinance uh, amends the zoning classification of the property located at 508 East New Breaker Street from uh, single family RS60 to multifamily RM2. This is the third uh, reading consideration. Motion to waive the third reading. Second. We have a motion and a second <clears throat> to waive the third reading. Um, any discussion? Roll call, Deb. Harley. Yes. 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 Motion carried then to waive that third reading. Motion to approve the third reading. Second. We have a motion and a second then to approve that third reading on this ordinance. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, vote please, Deb. Harley. Yes. Harley. Yes. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Yes. Motion carried. I think the last thing is the motion to adopt the yes. ordinance <clears throat> amending the zoning map. Second. We have a motion from Rodney, second from Don, uh, to adopt this ordinance. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, Deb. Harley. Yes. Yes. Rodney. Yes. Rodney. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Don. Yes. 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 Motion carried. Agenda item number 10, this is the third reading of an ordinance vacating a portion of 100th Avenue. Uh, as part of the, the upcoming uh, runway extension at the airport uh, section of 100th Avenue, which runs north and uh, south at the east of the airport, needs to be vacated. Uh, this is the third reading of the ordinance. Make a motion to waive the third reading. Second. We have a motion and a second to waive the third reading. Any discussion? Vote please, Deb. Yes. 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 Motion carried. Move to approve the third reading. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the third reading. Any discussion? Vote please, Deb. Yes. 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 That motion carried. Make a motion to adopt the ordinance vacating 100th Avenue. We have a motion and a second to adopt this ordinance. Any discussion? Hearing none, vote please, Deb. Harley. Yes. Yes. Harley. Yes. Tyler. Yes. 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 Motion carried. Agenda item number 11 is an ordinance amending the municipal code. This is the first reading. This ordinance. Uh Amendment. 
Um, so there's kind of uh, three items um, that I want to uh, point out that this uh, ordinance amendment um, does is first it uh, amends the uh, chapter two, the council appointments, as well as um, uh, the chapter two uh, mayoral appointments. Um, currently, throughout our code section, the various um, uh, section establishing the board or the position um, declares uh, how the position is appointed. Um, we'll keep those, but in uh, talking with um, our, our city attorney, um, we thought it'd be nice to put them basically in one centrally located spot. Uh, these are the mayoral appointments, these are the council appointments. Uh, so a uh, majority of these changes are just putting them in there. It's, it's um, uh, for the record, um, even though there's, there's no uh, substantive change. Uh, a few items that are, are Otherwise, that is um, on council appointment. Um, it removes the superintendent of public improvement as well as the appointment of the sewer superintendent. Um, and, and we'll get to that in a moment. And then on the mayoral appointments, um, it removes the board of uh, electrical examiners, um, which uh, the city no longer has, as well as the playground and recreation commission, which was some old language that was in there. The uh, Parks and Rec Commission were merged. And then it also adds the Housing Commission, uh, which is uh, already appointed by the mayor. Uh, then in Chapter 13 or Section 3 of the ordinance uh, on the superintendent, uh, currently our, our city code states that the uh, sewer superintendent, which is Mark Lentz, um, is appointed by the city council. Um, in reviewing, um, just kind of how we have that system set up. Um, you know, when Mark retires and we have to you know, replace that position right now, it would be that you know, we would have an interview team, we would make an offer on a position, but it'd have to be contingent upon then it going to city council in a public meeting and saying this is the candidate, yay or nay. Um, it's a very technical um, position, so um, our recommendation as staff is just to move that under um, similar to other positions that it'd be hired uh, by the city administrator as opposed to that particular position coming before the council for uh, formal approval. Um, so the uh, chapter 13, which is amended, uh, the powers and duties are still the same. Uh, we just took out the section uh, that stated that it was appointed by the city council and would, um, would not just be appointed by the city administrator as other positions are. Well, following that summary, I would uh, hope we waive the first reading. Second. We have a motion and a second. A second from Don to waive that first reading. Any discussion? Hearing none, vote please, Deb. Carly. Yes. Fred. Yes. Rodney. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Don. Yes. Yes. Motion carried. Move to approve the first reading. Second. We have a motion from Harley, a second from Don to um, approve that first reading. Any discussion? Hearing none, vote please, Deb. Carly? Yes. Fred? Yes. Rodney? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Don? Yes. Jody? Yes. Motion carried. Agenda item number 12. Uh, this is the first reading of an ordinance amending the municipal code. This one relates to uh, parking on Moore Street, uh, specifically between the blocks in Nebraska and the Greater. Um, as we were planning uh, the street project for this year, um, we realized that we uh, had a, a one final item on last year's reconstruction project that we had to address. So uh, Moore Street, when that was reconstructed, it's a 26-foot wide street. And as we were uh, going through design um, and talking to the Jason Lynch, one of the things that came up was concerns on parking and just the likelihood of accidents with the angle of parking in front of where this would occur and it would be another crest funeral home and the parallel parking um, on the east side there. Um, so when you uh, looked at the street widths and what was uh, could be accommodated, uh, that parallel parking there, there certainly wasn't room for. Uh, so when that street was designed, it was intended that we wouldn't have uh, parallel parking on the east side um, anymore. So that would be, uh, otherwise, we don't even know if we've got a car there. It's only 26 feet wide. So this uh, ordinance uh, extends the uh, prohibition of uh, parallel parking on the east side of the street um, that currently extends from the Grader to Obermeyer um, up one block. 
as I recall that street. Doesn't seem that often people parked parallel on that side anyway, so. Just be a full, I mean, awake maybe. I've seen it a mm -hmm, few times. Yeah. But there's no painting on the street yet, is there? Um, or has it been painted for parallel? No, it hasn't been painted. Okay. Um, and when, um, we didn't put a, a sign either way back mm -hmm. on um, you see, you know, have parking and mixed activities mm -hmm. hours. And so now we put a new sign up um, just with no parking on that side. Okay. I moved away the first reading. Second. A motion from Don, a second from Rodney to waive that first reading. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, vote please, Deb. Carter? Yes. Fred? Yes. Rodney? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Don? Yes. Joey? Yes. Motion carried. <coughs> Move to approve the first reading. Second. A motion from Don, a second from Rodney to approve that first reading. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, roll call, Deb. Carter? Yes. Fred? Yes. Rodney? Yes. 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 Motion carried. Uh, agenda item number 13. This is a resolution pertaining to Phillips and McCoy Street and Call Street parking lot reconstruction. Yep. So um, this uh, resolution does a number of things, um, but pertains uh, to the upcoming uh, reconstruction project that we have coming here in 2022. Uh, so the focus of this resolution is the uh, five lots of uh, North McCoy Street. summarized everything uh, with the resolution, uh, the bid date, and the contract award public hearing date for the next council meeting, uh, for the first council meeting in April. So I guess if there's any specific questions you had or concerns. One question I had that just thinking about North McCoy working on that, um, kind of have an isolated section north of Garrigan to Highway 18. Do you have any thoughts on how you're going to provide access there while we're working on the street? Yep, yeah, we do have a phasing plan for both projects. We've summarized the Phillips one a few times, keeping yeah. Elm Street or Oak Street open uh, at all times. We're going to do the same thing with Maple and Mound, uh, so they're going to need to maintain access there. Um, there's really no, there's no access to the, the Eastland Hill Mall um, that's not directly off of uh, McCoy Street. So we're going to utilize... Street, yes. Uh, we're going to utilize that to get access to the uh, mall at all times, <coughs> along with uh, the businesses and the apartments that are also um, kind of on the east side of McCoy Street. So, okay. yep. so either Mound or Maple will generally one of those will, will be open um, throughout the, the project in phase one, which is from Kerrigan. That also has a few specific um, items in terms of start date. Good weather this summer because yes. that's a mm -hmm. tight schedule. But yep, that's a lot of work to do. Um, but this phase can all get done in one construction season. So close to Harley, those businesses that are kind of isolated here on Highway 18 are going to have signs up telling them how to get to those businesses. Uh, just because we don't want the, uh, the mall and uh, Emerald Street or the businesses in this mm -hmm. uh, project. Okay. or 
so just letting people know that this will be happening um, so they can just kind of get that in their head. And then once we have, you know, we have a good general contract with you, we can talk with them on timeline. Um, we'll uh, you know, kind of get that word out against so people to know that these businesses are open and just have to make accommodations. And then um, as with last year's project uh, in Fulton Lake, we'll have a website for that um, set up that people can review or sign up. and the, the e-blast communication is whether they want to email or text um, if they choose to sign up for that. Do you know on the south end of McCoy if um, that intersection, is that Locust Street or whatever there, uh, will that be interrupted or? Pop Poplar Street. Or maybe it's Poplar. There you yeah, go. Poplar Street yeah. is the through street. So we are going to be doing utility work in that intersection. There's uh, sanitary, there's storm sewer and water main in that intersection. Okay. Um, so that street will be closed for a while. Um, when we, once we get the underground work done, we are going to gravel it and temporarily open it back up for traffic until we get uh, paving. But there will be kind of a couple weeks of closure for the underground, and then another probably good week or, or maybe two weeks of closure for pavement construction on that street. Um, we're going to try and you know, phase everything in that phase to be done before school starts. So that's the intent there. I don't know if this has come up in conversations with AMU yet about the call street parking. So we're putting in like those kiosks where they can plug in their cars, the electric cars. Yep. How do those work? Do people like pay for their charge, like with a credit yeah, card think, or something like that? So not, putting quarters I'm not 100% sure on the specific model that they chose, but they yeah. do have credit card readers on them typically. Okay. Or right. you have a phone app um, that you pay it through the app. Okay. It's one of, one of the two options. Something like that. I'm not sure which specific model they ended up going with. But. Something like that. Just curious. Yeah, so, so in coordinating those electric charging stations with AMU, uh, the plan is there will be two of those in the southeast corner of that parking lot. Uh, and then the capacity down, or the conduit store down the road at if and when demand warrants it and we want to add charging stations to the north, we can easily do that. Um, and then AMU will, we, we did have to lose an additional parking spot um, because AMU will need to uh, add a transformer um, there because our current one is, is full. Um, so we, yeah, that's, we're, to start we'll just have the two electric charging stations. And yeah, as Max said, I, I know AMU, um, they're planning on, there'll be some system of like a credit card or section or area to the west um, we'll have space to do to mount some uh, bike racks and or um, have some benches there as well yep. so it'll be uh, just with the um, spacing and the suit aspects that Matt can articulate um, with where we have the driveway we do plan to eliminate that parallel parking um, on the north side of Call Street there so this was kind of one of the ways we can put that space back to some, some usable um, As long as those benches are not in line of traffic sight vision, you know, because Call Street is just such a great, you know, when you're looking to the left and trying to get on that street. I mean, have you thought about that a little bit too? Yeah. When I'm trying to get on the Call Street, coming from my hairdresser, it's just hard to take a left on there. So just yeah. keep that in mind. Yep. Just saying. I think that's going to be something that's installed after. Yeah. If, yeah, the bike racks and the, and the benches are not going to be part of the project. They're just going to be yeah. a space to, to mm -hmm. utilize in, in the future for okay. those amenities. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you.
for that. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Uh, motion to approve the resolution. Second. We have a motion from Rodney, second from Brad. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, vote please, Deb. Turner. Yes. Turner. Yes. Turner. Yes. Turner. Yes. Turner. Yes. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Agenda item number 14. This is a resol re uh, resolution acknowledging repayment and release of a mortgage. Uh, Emerald uh, LLC. Second. We have a motion from Tyler, second from Don. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, Deb. Harvey. Yes. Brad. Yes. Rodney. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Don. Yes. 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 Motion carried. And thank you, Emeralds, for making those payments. Agenda item number 15 is a resolution authorizing release of mortgage. Motion to approve the re resolution authorizing release of mortgage. Second. We have a motion for Rodney, a second from Tyler. Any discussion? Vote please, Deb. Brad. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Don. Yes. Jody. Yes. Motion carried. Agenda item number 16 is a resolution um, authorizing the release of mortgage. Approve. Second. We have a motion from Harley, second from uh, Brad. Any discussion? Vote please, Deb. Harley? Yes. Brad? Yes. Brad? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Don? Yes. Jody? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And thank you, Lori, for uh, making those payments. So, agenda item number 17 this is a resolution approving the union contract. This resolution approves. Uh, Okay. Hearing none, I entertain a motion then to approve that resolution. So moved. I'll second. We have a motion from Donna, second from Jody. Um, any discussion? Vote please, Deb. Brother. Yes. Brad. Yes. Rodney. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Don. Yes. Jody. Yes. Motion carried. Agenda item number 18. Uh, this refers a number of items to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Given the variety and the
some level of um, you know reasonable accommodation on um, you know having a, a, a garden shed or something like that on a on a good day lot. Uh, so then um, it's kind of the what uh, the, the primary driver which led to, to this uh, referral, and then in reviewing that, um, a few other items kind of came up, um, and so we uh, provide for a definition. said the garden shed does come with a description. I mean, I wouldn't want uh, one of those metal storage containers being called a garden shed. <laughs> so, so right now, the definition we have of a garden shed means a portable structure less than 120 square feet, uh, which has no utilities connected. Um, and this is something I'm sure, you know, between work at the commission, as well as when it comes back to council, that we'll have discussion on is that we're trying to find that balance of not allowing a use that, you know, in its own residential, the intent is that it's being built as residential. You don't want to turn in, you can put garages up and then it just kind of turns into a hobby um, area. But, uh, so we're, we're looking at something that is portable, it doesn't have permanent utilities run to it. Um, you know, for the siding, we have to, you know, still comply with the setbacks. Um, so it's something that we think that while these lots are not yet developed, and if they are, you know, using it as a garden just to help maintain the lot, um, you know, providing some sort of structure that they can keep equipment on the site, uh, but doing so in a manner that um, <coughs> doesn't really push the site into a use that's not really intended for it being really residential. So th this item is just a referral. Yes. Motion to approve, moving, uh, referring to planning and zoning. I'll second. We have a motion from Rodney, second from Jody to uh, refer this to planning and zoning. Any discussion? Hearing none, vote please, Deb. Pardon? Yes. Correct. Yes. Rodney. Yes. 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 Motion <laughs> carried. That'll be referred then to planning and zoning. Uh, agenda item number 19, this is to set a public hearing. Um, we need to do, uh, at the public hearing. I'll second. Motion from Don and second from Jody to set the public hearing for Monday, March the 21st, 5 p.m. Any discussion? Hearing none, vote please, Deb. Yes. 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 Motion carried. Agenda item number 20 is to approve a pay application. This is pay application number four from Motion to approve pay application. I'll second. We have a motion from Rodney and a second from Jody to approve this pay application. Any discussion? Hearing none, vote please, Deb. Yes. 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 
Yes. Sure. Yes. Yes. Motion carried. Agenda item tw uh, number 21 is also to approve a pay application. This is pay application number eight uh, from uh, Sam Construction for the Teach Park Shelter House project. Uh, uh, payment due is 25,651 dollars and 98 cents. Uh, the engineer, excuse me, the project architect has reviewed and, and recommends approval. Move to approve. We have a motion from Brad, second from Tyler to approve this pay application. Any discussion? Roll call, Deb. Yes. 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 Motion carried. Agenda item number 22. This is an appointment to the tree board. We do have a vacancy there. Um, is there anyone contact anyone about the tree board? Okay. That is a three-year term. Uh, and then agenda item number 23, this is the final notification of vacancy of an appointment to the Library Board of Trustees due to uh, Dave Skilling's resignation. And this is a mayoral appointment. And I've been in conversation with Lori Walton and uh, Bryce Gadbury's name has, has come forth. Um, and Lori certainly, certainly recommended Bryce. He, is a, a user, current user um, of the library, and um, I know he has had leadership in, in other areas, and I feel good also to recommend Bryce Gadbury for the Library Board of Trustees, so I would recommend his appointment. So to approve. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, just want to oh. clarify that this will be for the remainder of Dave Skilling's term, which uh, expires this year on June 30th. Yeah. So we'll have to do this again. Okay. 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 Vote, please, Deb. Charlie. Yes. Brad. Yes. Rodney. Yes. Tyler. Yes. John. Yes. Julie. Yes. Okay. Motion carried. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Bryce, for stepping forward and and volunteering to be on the library board. And uh, our final item then is the final notification of vacancy and appointment of the board of adjustment. This is uh, Jim Busher's term has expired. So has uh, anyone visited with anybody about the uh, Board of Adjustment term? I haven't, but we got two leadership class guys back there that maybe they could take back. And maybe they wanted them, or maybe they'd want to take back and see if they can help us with that. <laughs> okay, very good. Okay, it is uh, 545, and uh, uh, brings us to the end of our agenda, and I would entertain a motion then to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Yeah.